Alright guys, Tactical Bit here today, and I wanted to go through for the second upload of the day all the substitute changes that we have seen announced, because there's been a surprising amount of like substitute mania, I guess you could say, around these changes, and some very interesting ones indeed. Of course, the big one is Pharaoh moving to substitute on 100 Thieves, with Priester coming into the active lineup and Crowder coming in as coach. So that was the first upload I did talking about that change, whether it will survive the test of time. So you can find that down in the description box below, all that good stuff. And yeah, today I wanted to talk through all the other changes that have been confirmed so far. There is some that are still yet to be confirmed that may be even confirmed before this video goes live, which would be unfortunate, but regardless, I can cover them in a future video anyway, and there's still a fair few to talk through today. And some really rather interesting ones. Now, the importance of the substitutes is an interesting story. I did talk about exactly how it works the other day. I did mention in the earlier video that I did get one of the wordings slightly wrong in the rule set. So if we scroll all the way down here to page 15, basically I read this little section wrong. So every team is required to have a substitute in the league. And I thought that this meant, if you just read through the sentence, I thought it meant that you can only use a substitute for like one week out of the four before roster changes can take place at the start of March. But what it actually means is you can use either your substitute or a player in your active lineup every week. You just have to decide before the week, and then they have to play the entire week's worth of matches is basically how it works. So, 100 Thieves have used this to make a roster change, but other teams have not done that as yet. So, let's go through some other changes that we've seen, because there's a plenty few of them. Teams that have picked up substitutes, or they have, in the case of Envy, picked up their coach in Bevels as their substitute. Now what's quite interesting is what Callum says in reply here, doesn't that mean he'll have to play in the amateur league circuit? But I don't think it actually does. Um, I think basically you can pick up anyone as your substitute, but it's tended to be players from the amateur circuit is kind of what they wanted to happen. But I guess Envy can do this with Bevels. Like I was talking about, it's, it's a high IQ play to pick up your coach as a substitute because they know your team very well. They also understand in great depth, you know, that the strength and weaknesses of your players, which roles they would best replace if, so, if something does come up. But as Paddy P says here, I don't think subs will come into play this year aside from emergencies quality spelling on that but Bevels will be a sub for the time being for those wondering so an interesting scenario because there's some really interesting changes here in terms of who will be the substitute for what team and I did talk about yesterday maybe the advantages and disadvantages of being a substitute on a top team um, for your potential career maybe you have to sign a contract or something but to be honest the instigation of a substitute being required is so unlikely the only time it happened last year was, I, I, I can't forget whether it was stage one or stage two, might have been stage one, when Jerd couldn't fly out to the States to play in the league for the first week because he had some visa issues. So they used to splice up to get Felony in as a sub. And regardless, that was the only time there was like an emergency where they needed a substitute. And because the European teams are now based in the States, it's very intriguing as to if, when and why these sort of instances would be required. And as we go on later, whether the actual, the substitutes will be the problem more than the players in terms of visa and emergencies uh, will be an interesting one indeed. But yeah, Panny P and Co decided to pick up Bevels as their substitute. He can just sub in whenever required. He's already in the States, already living in whatever team house, if they even have a team house, whatever's going on over there. He's in the local vicinity, so it definitely makes sense. Then we have Panda getting picked up onto Midnight. So this Midnight squad of Brack, Jetly, Parzellium, Envoy, and Llama God, they're going to get Panda in as their sixth man, which is definitely an interesting one. They were doing really well in the Pro Down yesterday as well. I think I might cover the Pro Down tomorrow or something like that. Because it was an interesting situation. Optic, I think, came home with a victory yet again. Uh, but regardless, Midnight did really well in that, definitely proving their worth online. And Panda from the old Ghost Gaming crew from last year and then Pittsburgh Knights, is now onto this team as the sixth man substitute if required. We already did mention that Happy, a name that you may not have heard in a while, is going over to Splice as their substitute for this season. Very interesting situation there, and it really shows how limited importance these substitutes do have in the overall situation because, you know, Splice don't think they're going to need a substitute, so might as well just get one of our friends who's happy to do it for free, maybe a bit of exposure, might get back on a top team or maybe get a chance if he does have the opportunity to play after all. And, you know, they're probably so confident that they're going to do well anyway that even if they do need a substitute for a week, they probably don't think it's going to make much difference in 12 weeks of play after all. 
This is where it gets really interesting. Reciprocity have decided to pick up Dylan Cod. So this was a player that I was told, T Dylan, whatever you want to say. This guy was fantastic at the Pre League qualifier. Really good at Vegas as well on that Team Sween lineup that unfortunately couldn't go the extra mile to make it all the way to the Pro League. But he is on Reciprocity as their sixth man. Now what really intrigues me here is... How is he going to get to the States if required? Because it's not like they're just going to fly him out for the entirety of the Pro League, as far as I'm aware, and living in their house, even though they have like a, a massive house in, in Vegas, they definitely have a room that he could probably just have all to himself. But, you know, he's living at home, he's, he's only like 19 or whatever. He's got family and stuff like that. He's not just going to go out to the States between like the start of February and the end of June for the entire season. So if they happen to need him as a substitute, he's probably going to have to fly out there relatively last minute. And the fact that, you know, does he have a visa sorted? Because the guy is in, in uh, the reciprocity in the Red Reserve House. They have like a P1 visa or whatever it's exactly called. So you can work like as an athlete or whatever in the States. Now, whether they're going to try and get that for him, I guess that is the next step considering, you know, it's tough, isn't it? To, to get this guy out, to fly out last minute, if that is going to be the case, to substitute in for a player who, you know, might be ill or whatever. You know, it's interesting. Will he even get a chance anyway? The guys on reciprocity are such good vibes. Whether, whether they ever think they'll need a substitute or whether they decide to give Dylan a go in the team instead of like a guy like Denz or a guy like Shawnee I don't know maybe those are the two main candidates to swap out even though I do really rate Shawnee so it's an interesting one maybe they've done it just to prevent another team from getting him which is one potential idea if they manage to get Dylan on some sort of contract then long term he's definitely a change if the team needs a change at any point if one player starts underperforming Dylan's the guy they can go to and they don't have to worry about a red reserve or another top American team snatching this guy off the market so Makes a lot of sense and I'm really happy Dylan's got this opportunity. Moving onwards, we have Methods going over to UYU. So this is super interesting in my opinion because I think Skies is their main ICR. So the fact that they would have Methods potentially coming into the team as a substitute in the ICR role is super interesting. As someone commented on my video about substitutes, it would make a lot of sense for your subs to be like Maddox players. And Dylan, of course, we just talked about is like an SMG. Uh, but that kind of makes sense in the context of how the game is progressing moving forwards in terms of the meta game. Picking up a main ICR, or at least a main, like a turtle AR, is really interesting as your substitute. And it's not like he's going to be able to fill in for a lot of different roles on the team, is he? So regardless, it's interesting. I'm sure a lot of you guys who are, you know, fans of Methods are happy he's at least getting some opportunity to potentially play on a league team at some point. But it's, you know, it's far from the biggest name organization in the league overall. Then we have God RX here. He's going to be the substitute for Evil Geniuses. I thought maybe Revan could be a possibility. But God RX, you know, Panda is on Midnight. God RX, the, the duo, I guess you could say there. He's going over to EG. Superbly talented player and I believe he's an SMG as well and that makes a lot of sense here because God RX, superb SMG, Evil Geniuses, they have a lot of SMG players in the team so if there was someone who had to drop out for whatever reason, God RX would be the perfect replacement there and yeah maybe they're thinking down the line this is a change you could consider if Felony maybe starts underperforming to some degree. God RX could be a man that goes straight into the squad. Then we have another super interesting one that I'm very happy for. Shocks to Red Reserve. Now this is a similar situation with Dylan to Reciprocity. It's highly unlikely they're going to fly Shocks out for several months, is it? Considering I think Shocks is still studying at university and, you know, he has a girlfriend or whatever that doesn't want him to leave or something like that. So he's hardly going to be leaving to the States for several months just on the off chance that he has to substitute in. Uh, but yeah, the guys on Red Reserve definitely have got along with Shocks in the past. Some people would say maybe Luca was a better pickup in this regard. But, you know, Shocks is more proven. They're more friendly with him. Maybe he can play more different roles than what Luca has. Definitely would be more accustomed to going to the States and, you know, having to fill in and, you know, more, you know, doesn't have any nerves issues or anything like that because he's playing for so long. Kind of makes sense and, you know, it's an off chance anyway that he's going to have to play. So... It's an interesting one, but if it is required, he's going to have to, you know, fly out to the States. I don't know if you'll need a visa or say he's on holiday or something will happen, but it's really interesting. And that's why logistically, I thought it made much more sense to get your substitute from the States already. But Reciprocity and Red Reserve, so far of the teams that have announced, have decided, you know what, we'll get someone from abroad and hopefully there won't be too many issues there. And I think it's definitely to the 
to the betterment of the global pro league because if all the substitutes were from the states then it doesn't set a great precedent does it for the future of the global pro league and as a final one we have Robbie Beeman who was really good with the SMG at the pro league qualifier had like a 1.3 almost even though he didn't play that many maps he's going to be the substitute for EXG or accelerate I don't know why they go by EXG I don't like that because accelerate it should have an L in there somewhere but regardless so fastballer says they pick this guy up as their sixth man you know there's not too many high hopes for this team right now but it's definitely an interesting one and it's cool to see Robbie Beeman get his chance because when I watched him play against Optic in a 2k last year he was frying so just to sum up the teams we know of so far on COD Gamepedia Optic haven't yet announced who their substitute has been at least at the time of recording this video but the teams that have announced Spice with Happy, Reciprocity with Dylan, Envy with Bevels as coach as well, Panda as substitute for Midnight, Ferro of course sub for 100 Thieves with Crowder as coach, Methods for UIU, GodRx, Robbie Beeman and Shocks are the ones we know so far. The teams that don't have these little uh, in and out arrows right here don't yet have a substitute confirmed but I'll go through those as and when the changes occur. So if there's any interesting scenarios you guys want to talk about in the comment section below feel free to do so. Thank you guys so much for watching, like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new as always and I'll see you next time. Oh, I, didn't get I was pushing close oh, to you. Oh my god, one's running Pushing close mid tree. I got him, I got him. I stunned someone. Wasn't it's me. Treated. That wasn't one of you. One's pushing into A. Into A? Or into my building? Yeah, it's like in the A building. Like you'd be pushed onto A bomb. Okay. I have the bomb, which is kind of awkward. I have a smoke to plant though, so... I have no idea what I'm supposed to do, so that's kind of awkward. Oh, he's on the front of the thing. Hang on. I'll try and kill this guy. This is so awkward. I'll kill that guy in a second. I got him. Oh, jeez. Oh. Above me top A. How did he just kill me that way? Top A building. I'm kind of trapped here. Oh, please oh, keep going. Oh, shit. The way I just I didn't know died. you were dead. <laughs> yeah, you fucking calling your dick off there. You're like calling everything out and there's only one I love it. Oh no. What's well, pushing wait, me close in A building the here? Then no, I'm here. I think I watched the cross and went up to my mad balcony spot at the back of the map. Yeah, yeah you did, yeah. Bomb. Yeah, no, Kieran took bomb. On, on defense I pushed up though. I just got wall banged oh by a deagle. Oh my god, what is that? Wall banged by a fucking deagle like. He went back to their sort of B. Okay, One's in A as well. On One's close A, like at the steps. Then the other two are in B, I think. Might try and play for the kill at the steps. So much and just not dying right now. Steps dead. Go on a B. Last guys. <laughs> Inside B, I'm guessing somewhere. The greatest game ever, I actually love this. <laughs> Crossfire is Aaron's map. He's, at, he's, he's doing a fucking. I'm guessing he's in. I'm guessing he's in there somewhere. <laughs> no, give it to Aaron. Give it to Aaron. So go. easy. This is so easy. <laughs> we'll take them back to back aces of the offense. Like, what is going on? <laughs> They're on the kills on our team. <laughs> Just have, just have the knowledge. <sighs> All right now.